Good morning again, and welcome to another episode of Android Book Tutorials. My name is Nicholas Nikolak, and you're, again, you're listening to the Android Book Tutorials. These tutorials are based on the Creative Commons work of Mark Murphy, who kindly releases versions of his book, The Busy Coder's Guide to Android Development, and as such are released com Creative Commons as well. I will read from the book and go through the points directly. You might be warned at this time that I cover only up to Android 4.4, whereas the original subscription book is updated on a quarterly basis. For completely current versions of Android, such as Android 6 and N, please purchase a subscription to Mur please purchase a subscription to Murphy's book at commonsware.com. Inside the manifest. The foundation for any Android application is the manifest file, androidmanifest.xml, in the root of your project. Here's where you declare what is inside your application, the activities, services, and so on. We're going to take a look at it right now. There's the manifest. You also indicate how the pieces attach themselves to the overall system. For example, you indicate which activity or activities should appear in the device's main main uh, menu, uh, the launcher. And here we go. Intent filter. Main activity. Enter name. Launcher. So this is the uh, activity that uh, is first. When you create your application, you'll get a starter manifest uh, generated for you. For a simple application offering a single activity and nothing else, the auto generated manifest will probably work out fine, but perhaps require a few minor modifications. On the other side of the spectrum, the manifest file for the Android API demo suite is over a thousand lines long. Your production Android applications will probably fall somewhere in the middle. In the beginning there was the root, and it was good. The root of all manifest files is, not surprisingly, the manifest element. Note the Android namespace declaration. You will use only the namespace on many of the attributes, not the elements. So for instance, manifest, attribute, namespace, and not uh, Android colon manifest. The biggest piece of information you need to supply in the manifest element is where the package is the package attribute. Here you can provide the name of the Java package that will be considered the base of your application. Your package is a unique identifier for your application. A device can only have one application installed with a given package, and the Play Store will only list one project with a given package. Your manifest also specifies Android version name and Android version code attributes. These represent the versions of your application. The Android version name value is what you you is what the user will see for a version indicator in the application's details screen for your app in the settings application. Also, the version name is used by the Play, Play Store listing. If you're distributing your if you are distributing your application that way, the version name can be any string value you want. The Android version code, on the other hand, must be an integer. And newer versions must have higher version codes and do older versions. Android and the Play Store will compare the version code of the new APK, the version code of the installed application to determine if a new APK is indeed needed in an update. It needed and indeed an update. 
The typical approach is to start the version code at 1 and increment it with each production release of your application. But you can choose another convention if you wish. During development, you can leave this alone, but when you move to production, these attributes will matter greatly. Greatly. An application for your application. In your project's manifest, the primary child of the manifest element is an application element. By default, when you create a new Android project, you get a single activity element inside the application element. This element supplies Android colon name for the rest of the for the class implementing the activity. Android colon label for the display name of the activity and sometimes an intent filter child element describing under what conditions the activity will be displayed. The stock activity elements set up your activity to appear in the launcher so users can run it. As we'll see later in the book, you can have several activities in one project if you so choose. The Android colon name attribute, in this case, is a bear driver class. has a bear Java class, uh, as you can see, main activity. Sometimes you'll see Android colon name with a fully qualified class name. For instance, com.commonsware.android.skeleton.now. Sometimes you'll see a Java class name with a single dot prefix. For instance, dot main activity. Both uh, main activity with that's fully qualified and dot main activity refer to a Java class that will be your your product projects package in your projects package the one you declare in the package attribute is uh, of the manifest element specifying versions as we noted earlier in this chapter your manifest already contains some versions information uh, about your application's version. It also contains uses SDK, it also contains a uses SDK element as a child of the manifest element to your Android manifest.xml file to specify what versions of Android you are supporting. Uses SDK element, excuse me. The most important tribute for your uses SDK element is Android colon min SDK version. Uh, da, da, da. We don't have one at the moment, but we will eventually. Uh, da, da. This indicates what is the oldest version of Android you are, you are testing with your application. The value of the attribute is an integer rep representing the Android API level. So if you're only testing your application with Android 2.1 and newer versions of Android, you would set your Android colon min SDK version to be 7. You should also specify an Android colon target SDK attribute. This indicates what version of Android you are thinking, as, thinking of as you're writing your code. If your application is run on a newer version of Android, Android might do some things to try to improve the compatibility of your code with respect to changes made in newer Android, in particular, uh, to get a new honeycomb look and feel when running on Android 3 or higher, you need to specify a target uh, SDK version of 11 or higher. Supporting multiple screens. Android devices come with wide range of screen sizes, from 2.8 inch tiny smartphones to 46 inch Google TVs and larger. My edition. Uh, Android devices, de 
excuse me, Android, Android divides these into four buckets based on physical size and the distance as to which they are usually viewed. So small, under three inches. Normal, three inches to around four and a half inches. Large, four and a half inches to around 10 inches. Extra large, over 10 inches. By default, your application will not support small screens. It will support normal screens and may support large and extra large screens via some outdated conversion code built into Android. Oh, outdated, excuse me. Automated conversion code built into Android. To truly support all screens as you want, you should consider adding a support screens element in your manifest. This enumerates the screen sizes you have explicit support for. For example, if you want to support small screens, you will need the support screens element. Similarly, if you are providing custom UI supports for large or extra large screens, you will want to have the support screens element. So, while the starting manifest file works, handling multiple screen sizes is something you will want to think about. Much more information about providing solid support for all screen sizes, including samples of the support screens element, will be found later in this book as we cover large screen strategies. Other stuff. As we proceed through the book, you'll find other elements being added to the manifest such as user permission uses permission excuse me tell the user that you need permission to use certain device capabilities such as the internet uses feature to tell android that you need the device to have need the device to have certain features for instance a camera and therefore your app should not be installed on devices lacking such features uses library Tell Android that you need device support for a certain library and firmware, for instance Google Maps, and therefore your app should not be installed on devices lacking that library. These and other elements are introduced elsewhere in the book. Tutorial number three, changing our manifest. As we build MPUB Lite, we need to make a number of changes to our project's manifest. In this tutorial, we'll take, a, take care of a couple of these changes to show you how to, mani how to manipulate the Android manifest.xml file. Future, future tutorials will make yet more changes. This, this is a continuation of the work we did in the previous tutorial. To find results of the previous tutorial uh, and results of this tutorial, in the, you can find you can find the results of the previous tutorial and the results of this tutorial in the book's GitHub repository. Check the first video for, uh, for that, or check the book. Step 1, supporting screens. Our application will restrict its support, uh, supported screen sizes. Tablets make for ide ideal ebook readers. Phones can also be used, but the smaller the phone, the more difficult, difficult it will be to come up with a UI that will let the, let the user do everything that is needed yet still have more room than uh, uh, still have room for more than a sentence or two uh, of the book at a time. We'll get uh, into screen size strategies and their details later in this book. For the moment, we will add a support screens element to keep our application off small screens uh, and devices under three inches diagonal size. If you make wish to make this change uh, using Eclipse's strategy. Oh, we're not an eclipse. Let's find out how to do this straight in the XML. Okay, so as a child of the root manifest element, Support screens. Android small screens. 
false because we don't want to uh, support strings that are uh, three inches or smaller diagonally. Android normal strings true. Android large screens, true. And then finally, Android extra large screens, true. Step number two. Validating our minimum and target SDK versions. So again, as a root of the manifest element, uses SDK. Android min SDK version, and we're going to go with 9. Android target SDK version, we're going to go with 15. Alrighty. And that completes um, our uh, our survey of the uh, manifest file. Hope you guys have a good rest of your morning, and talk to you later. Bye.